The CDC is alerting people to the first local spread of malaria in the U.S. in 20 years. So far, officials have reported five cases spread by mosquitoes over two months. Four of those cases are in Sarasota County, Florida. One is in Cameron County, Texas. Because those infected initially present flu-like symptoms, the CDC warns doctors in southern states to be on high alert. Joining us now in Studio 57 is Dr. Amesh Adalja. He's an infectious disease expert and senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. It's so good to have you physically with mm -hmm. us, Dr. Adalja. Uh, tell us both how prevalent malaria is in the U.S. and how concerned we need to be about this new localized transmission. Since the 1950s, malaria has not really been a problem in the United States. We have about 2,000 cases diagnosed every year, but those are people who have traveled to malarious areas. But at one time, malaria was an endemic infectious disease here. And that's why these cases are an alert, because this is telling us that local mosquitoes are transmitting in certain parts of the country. So we know that it, it can be confused with flu-like symptoms. So tell us a little bit about how it's spread, what are the symptoms, when do they appear, what should we be looking for? So malaria is spread by mosquitoes, female mosquitoes, a specific type of mosquito called an Anopheles mosquito. And what happens is they usually bite around dusk and dawn, and then you get seized with fevers, chills, muscle aches and pains. So it is something that's very similar to what you would get with COVID or influenza, but you don't have respiratory symptoms. And then it's basically a medical emergency because if you don't treat malaria with anti-malarials, you can get very, very critically ill. And talk to us about what communities and parents need to be aware of, especially as it's a summertime, we're spending time outdoors, especially at dusk, uh, the times when mosquitoes are likely to bite. Um, is, there, is there anything that we can better do to protect our families from malaria and other mosquito-borne illnesses? So first, it's important to remember this isn't a generalized wor worry for the whole country. There are certain areas where malarious mosquitoes have always resided and they just got lucky and bit somebody with malaria and then have been able to transmit it. The thing to do with mosquitoes is to try and avoid areas where you know they're mosquitoes and wear mosquito repellent. And remember, malaria isn't the only mosquito-borne illness we face here. West Nile is a mu much bigger threat to the United States. So it is important that we think about safety around mosquitoes and using mosquito repellents in areas where there's lots of mosquitoes. Well, speaking of that, we know that you, you spray for mosquitoes in the height of West Nile. Could this ever translate into a similar situation for malaria? I mean, how many cases would we have to see before that was enacted? It would be very difficult to see malaria get reestablished because malaria needs... So with West Nile, they use birds to get around. Malaria, the human malaria pathogens don't do that. So they need a lot of infected people that are in places where those special mosquitoes are. And that doesn't really translate to a lot of the United States. And we have air conditioning. We go indoors a lot. Things that mosquito-borne illnesses don't find very hospitable outside of Florida, Texas, Hawaii, those places where we see mosquito-borne illnesses in the U.S., those types. You're an infectious disease expert, Dr. Adalja. Um, the other thing that people have, are very concerned about in the summertime is obviously tick-borne illnesses. Can you give us some suggestions about that, too? It's almost the same as mosquitoes. There's tick repellent going into areas where there's ticks. Make sure that you're wearing appropriate clothing, that you're doing tick inspections. Diseases like Lyme disease don't instantaneously spread. So if you do a tick inspection, for example, after you come in and you remove a tick, it's unlikely that it transmits uh, Lyme disease. There are other tick-borne infections, but it's mostly about being smart when you go into areas and looking at your body to see uh, whether there's any ticks attached. Dr. Amesha Dalja, thank you so much for being here and for all the work that you do. Thanks.